thought I'd do a small video tutorial of actually assembling a UV camera, um, well my design anyway, and uh, doing a live shoot. Um, this is a bit hard because I'm standing behind the tripod and I don't have the best light in here, but that's not the aim. The aim is to show you how to assemble this camera. Um, you would have seen my other UV videos explaining what to buy. Now it's time to see how it all goes together. So we have your full frame camera here, sorry not full frame, full spectrum. We have the Invader U lens here, tripod mount, lens that I've decided to use, the mount for the lens to the um, bellows, UV light source, um, offshoot cable for the uh, flash and then the remote trigger. So full spectrum camera, um, I then attach to that this bellows which is a EOS fit so for me that's quite simple and that will just give me the ability to get better focus it's dust proof and hopefully light proof although this is cardboard and one day who knows it might break to that I've then got a mount for the lens because that's not EOS um, this is a little bit tricky this thing because it's not that expensive, it's cheapy. Then I've got my EL Nikkor lens which just goes on like that. It's a screw thread, I think it's an M42 for memory. There we go, we're assembled, we just don't have the filter. So now we have the filter, so just take the lens cap off and put that on. And essentially the hard part. My uh, step up, step down ring doesn't quite fit the thread of the filter. There we go, it's on. I don't put on too tight because it may not come off again. And sometimes I put some black tape around it just to make sure there's no light leakage. Basically, the camera is now assembled. Obviously, if I'm going to put on a tripod, I'm going to want to put it on the tripod mount. Um, this is very difficult to do while you're standing behind a tripod. There we go. Then I've got my off shoe flash arrangement. And that is so I can get the UV where I want it, close enough to whatever I'm taking a photo of. And then I've got the light source, which goes on here. And you've all seen how to fit a trigger before. Alright, here we have the camera assembled, ready to go, I've got the flash just dangling off the side there, and my subject, and I have found that yellow flowers, especially Jerusalem artichokes, come out the best, and some flowers, they have a really good UV response. What you're seeing here though, is that even though there's no card in the camera, the view is black. And that is because the auto exposure levels and all the rest of it goes on with the live view. You cannot see through the beta UV filter, and I need UV lights, and I also need to get focus um, and a few other things. So, the first thing to do is to actually remove the filter off the end and take a photo or take a look at it without the filter. Having removed the filter, Come to the back, it's now all white. Why is it white? Because I've got ISO cranked right up. So what I need to do now is bring the ISO down, and get focus with the flowers, and then, just before I go put the filter back on, pipe the ISO back up, uh, change the uh, time as well, at the moment it's over eight seconds, and the last thing I've got to do is slightly change my focus because it was a focus shift for UV.
Okay, so here I've dropped it to one two hundredth of a second, ISO 200, and I can see an image now. Obviously this is uh, in black and white because I've actually set it to monochrome as the profile. Um, now the problem is focus. And I'm going to try and do this one handy because I've only got one tripod. But I'm now going to move the bellows in and out. And as you can see, my focus changes. Now, one of the problems that I do have is depth of field. One of the other problems I have is distance from the subject. As you can see, I'm actually very close to the flowers, so I can only capture a small amount of image. And that's based on my lens. It's a very, 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 uh, um, it's, it's a very incompatible lens, let me put it that way. The focal plane doesn't really match the Canon, and I've done some tricks to make it work, and part of that is the bellows. Obviously with the bellows, what it does, and forgive me if it's out of focus, but it enables me to take that lens in and out and change the focal plane. So from here, I'll be adding the filter back, and I'll be slightly changing the focus point, and I'll be uh, changing the ISO, maybe up to 800, maybe more, and changing the seconds to 8 or 9 seconds. At this point, it's now trial and error. I've cranked the ISO right up and I've now got the filter on and I'm ready to try and take the photo. Let's see how it comes out. And this is trial and error. Um, and the flowers, they don't all work either. You gotta choose the right ones. Now, because I'm not using good old fashioned sunlight outside, I'm using a flash, then I've changed my timings to 1 over 25 and 400 ISO to try and get an image. And even though this has now worked for me and I'm taking photos of these flowers, unfortunately I've made a bad selection and these photos, these flowers, don't really have any UV traits about them. Uh, the stamen goes extra black and that's about it. Everything else just stays a greyish colour. Time to choose some better flowers. Okay, it's been for a walk in the garden to try and find something a bit better. The other flowers are purchased. These are out of the garden. Um, I've got a milkweed. I don't know what its real botanical name is. I've got a sour sob. Again, I have no idea. And then I've got an orchid, which is a bit used up, but I'm going to see if it's got a UV response. If it does, I've got some better ones out there I can grab. Let's see what happens. One of the other things that you need to take note of is this is a manual lens. So I have got this set down as wide as it will go. So this is set to 2.8 to try and let as much light in as possible. But of course that means your depth of field and obviously your aperture being where it is makes it very hard to take a photo. 